Josh the Lake and welcome to Tibet this week, a weekly news edition on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's have a look at today's headlines. His Holiness the Dalai Lama condoles demise of Czech former Foreign Minister Karl Schwarzenberg. His Holiness the Dalai Lama greets Sotoshu Zen Buddhist delegation from Japan. Parliament Secretariat announces to reconvene sixth session of the 17th Tibetan Parliament in exile. Sikyong Pimba Tsering leaves Taramshala for Halifax International Security Forum. Sikyong Pimba Tsering apprises His Holiness the Dalai Lama on latest official engagements. Unacceptable, says Central Tibetan Administration spokesperson on China's new white paper on Tibet. Delegation from Human Rights Network for Tibet and Taiwan and Hong Kong Outlanders visit Tibetan Parliament in exile. Department of Information and International Relations Kalu Nozidoma begins official engagements in Australia. WeTech holds India strategy meeting and training. Representative Dr. Tsawan Gebu Arya concludes visit to South Korea. Tibet Museum participates in Federation of International Human Rights Museums Asia Pacific Conference. Fifth Jan Jagran Cycle Yatra for Tibet begins in Kolkata, West Bengal. On Wednesday this week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama sent his condolences and prayers following the demise of Czech politician, diplomat and statesman Karol Schwarzenberg. In the letter, His Holiness recalled one of his visits to Prague when the late diplomat was Czech's foreign minister and said it was the privilege of accompanying him on his plane to Brussels. His Holiness counted him as a close ally and remained grateful for his steadfast friendship and support. Kimbo Sunam Tembil, Speaker of the Tibetan Parliament in Exile, also extended condolences on the demise of Czech's former Foreign Minister Karl Schwarzenberg. The former Foreign Minister passed away at the age of 85 after a prolonged illness. His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama met and interacted with the Sotoshu Zen Buddhist delegation from Japan led by Reverend Hayashi Shui of Choronji Temple at his residence in Dharamshala this Wednesday. Reverend Hayashi Shui, a long-time Tibet supporter and advisor to the Tibet-Japan office, presented His Holiness the Dalai Lama with a seven-point joint statement issued last September urging China to end violations of human rights and religious freedom in Tibet. Later that day, the delegation visited Central Tibetan Administration where they were greeted by the officiating Sikyong Thalam Doma Changra at the Kashak Secretariat. The delegation also paid a visit to the Tibetan parliament in exile and had a meeting with Speaker Kembusnam Tempel and Deputy Speaker Thomas Ringtega. The 16th member delegation was led by Representative Reverend Hayashi Shui, advisor of the Bipartisan Association of Monks and Lay People who Pray and Act for Peace in Tibet. In an announcement issued yesterday by the Parliament Secretariat, the sixth session of the 17th Tibetan Parliament in Exile will reconvene from 25th to 29th December with the remaining business of the general session that was postponed on its fourth day. The Parliament Secretariat on 28th September announced the postponement of the session due to the absence of the requisite quorum needed for the session to constitute. The Parliament Secretary also announced the seventh session of the 17th Tibetan Parliament in Exile will be held from 14 to 30th March 2024 for 15 days. On Wednesday this week, Sigyong Bimba Tsering of the Central Tibetan Administration departed for Canada to attend the Halifax International Security Forum from 17 to 19 November. Sigyong is scheduled to deliver the keynote address at the forum. Following Halifax, Sikyong was scheduled to visit Ottawa for a four-day engagement, including public address to the Tibetan community in Ottawa. Following that, Sikyong was scheduled to pay short visits to Minnesota, Barcelona, Vinaya and Paris. Sikyong will return to Delhi on 3rd December. On Monday this week, Sikyong Bimba Tsering of the Central Tibetan Administration sought an audience with His Holiness the Dalai Lama.
Speaking to Tibet TV after the audience, Sigil mentioned that His Holiness the Dalai Lama is hoping to see many people visit India during His Holiness scheduled visit to Bodh Gaya, Bihar in December this year. Sigion said he briefed His Holiness the Dalai Lama on the activities of Kashak, including his recent visit to Latin America and the United States. Sikyon said the minutes of the recently concluded Permanent Strategy Committee meeting were also presented to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Tenzi Lekshe, the spokesperson of the Central Tibetan Administration, dismissed the recently released the so-called White Paper on Tibet by Communist Party of China. Tenzi Lekshe calls the paper is full of lies, misinterpretations and misconceptions and hence unacceptable. The, uh, the striking thing is uh, the absence of Tibet. And all through the documents, the only there is about Shizang. So it's very confusing, first thing, because all through the time, in all the official white papers, uh, which uh, since the Chinese occupation of Tibet, they had established more than around 14, 15 white papers in Tibet. But this is the only white paper which they talked about Shizang, not Tibet. So this is one thing which is uh, uh, very striking in a way. And, which, uh, and it is also uh, very politically right, uh, which in a way try to deassociate Tibet from the memories of the Tibetan people and from the international communities and try to come up with a new narrative of their authority and their, uh, 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 the submissive of Tibet uh, into the Chinese communist regime. So this, however, is uh, in fact from the CTA's point of view, I think uh, the Shizang itself is not acceptable, first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Shizang, they are only talking about uh, so-called Tao region, but we, in the Senate administration, we talk about the aspirations of Tibetan people all over China, right? So therefore, uh, when we look at the glance, uh, it consists of lots of misinterpretations, misconceptions, and, uh, and lies. The Chinese government last Friday issued another so-called white paper on Tibet titled CPC Policies on the Governance of Shizang in the New Era, Approach and Achievements. On Tuesday this week, a delegation composed of five representatives from the Human Rights Network for Tibet and Taiwan and the Hong Kong Outlanders visited the Tibetan parliament in exile. The delegation consisted of Wu Hao Jen, Tashi Tsiring, Lin Xin Yi, Sky Feng and Tsai Meng Zi had a meeting with Speaker Kempus Nam Tempel and the Deputy Speaker Thomas Ring Tegang. Greeting the visiting guests, the Speaker spoke on the similarity between the situation of Tibetans and Taiwanese in terms of political and religious aspects and informed them about the meeting between the representatives of Tibetans, Uyghurs, Hong Kongers, Taiwanese and Inner Mongolians held during the sidelines of the 8th World Parliamentarians Convention on Tibet in Washington, D.C. While the Deputy Speaker shared her experience of her recent official trip to Germany, where she had the opportunity to introduce the Central Tibetan Administration, a unique democratic setup of Tibetans in exile, bestowed by His Holiness the Dalai Lama to many esteemed officials. Kalu Nozuduma of the Department of Information and International Relations, Central Tibetan Administration, embarked upon her official visit to Australia and New Zealand this week. On Thursday this week, Australian Senator Janet Rice welcomed Kalu Nozuduma to the Australia. Today, the Australian All Party Parliamentary Group on Tibet had the honour of meeting Kalan Nozuduma. Kalan Dolma is the Minister for the Department of Information and International Relations in the Central Tibetan Administration, which is the Tibetan Parliament in Exile, which runs as a democratic government for Tibetans in exile all around the world. And I want to thank Norzen for coming to Australia and for speaking with us about the existential threat that Tibet faces under China's occupation. At an event hosted by the Australian All-Party Parliamentary Group for Tibet at Parliament House, 
Canberra Kalu addressed on the Tibet briefing. Kalu Nuzruma met the Shadow Foreign Minister of Australia, Senator Simon Birmingham, and briefed them on Tibet in an hour long discussion. Kalu met with Mr. Peter Khalil, MP Chair of the Parliamentary Joint Committee on Intelligence and Security of Australia, and had an interactive discussion on Tibet. Kalu also met with the experts of Lowy Institute and Reverend Bill Crews at the Reverend Bill Crews Foundation at Ashfield, Sydney. In Canberra, Kalu met with the former representatives and executive member of the Canberra Tibetan Community Association. Kalu was accompanied by DIR Secretary Kama Chuying, Representative Kama Singhi of the Office of Tibet Australia, Office of Tibet Secretary Lawa Gilpo, DIR Staff Tsidin Doma, Office of Tibet Chinese Liaison Officer Dawa Sangmo, Toto Zoe, Executive Officer and the Staff Sonam from Australia Tibet Council. Kalu Nonzuroma is heading the Voluntary Tibet Advocacy Group's Tibet Advocacy Strategy Meeting today and will then head to Wellington to address the Asia-Pacific Security Innovation Forum Annual Summit. During her week-long visit to Australia and New Zealand from 14 to 21st, November, Kalu Nozudoma will draw attention to the priorities and concerns currently facing the Tibetan people. On Monday this week, the Department of Information and International Relations Central Tibetan Administration held a three-day VTEC India Strategy Meeting and Training at the Administrative Training and Welfare Society in Dharamshala. Honorable Kalun Tisu Venerable Samdong Rumbuche and Tibet supporter Sri Krishan Kapoor, a member of the Lok Sabha, attended the inaugural session of the meeting come training as chief guest, along with additional Secretary Tenzi Lekshe, official spokesperson of the Central Tibetan Administration, and Chief Representative Officer of Shimla Tsawang Pinzo. From today, we are going to start uh, with the VTEC India strategy meeting and training. So. We have called upon uh, more than 30 young Tibetans from nine different states or places uh, in India to discuss about what they should do regarding the advocacy on Tibet issues. So it will not just be a strategy meeting, but rather also a training for uh, young Tibetans to understand about what uh, our situation is and how could we be a real voice for the Tibetans in India. So um, that. Department of Information and National Relations facilitate this meeting and the training so that the young Tibetans and the VTACs uh, will be able to succeed in their advocacy uh, activities inside India. Being honest, I really don't know much about VTAC. So uh, one of the main reasons I came here is to learn um, what VTAC actually is and what is the purpose behind the formation of VTAC. And what I expect is to learn uh, things that I have, like I'm yet to learn about the world and uh, what I can do, uh, I can, what I can do by myself, like what I can do for my people and what I can do for the cause of Tibet. Uh, the main reason why I'm here is simply because I am a Tibetan and I strongly do believe that each and every uh, Tibetan, we do have the responsibility to be part of the Tibetan advocacy group as being a Tibetan. So that's why I'm over here. The former Kalun Tibor of the Tibetan Exile Administration said, truth and non-violence are the two fundamental components of a peaceful resolution to the Tibet issue. From November 13 to 15, for two days, uh, the volunteers of the, the voluntary Tibet advocacy groups from nine different regions in India has convened uh, to strategize action plans for future. Uh, so uh, over the last three days, uh, they have discussed among themselves to, to check out the plans about what they should do in the future and specifically to advocate about the Tibetan issues among the Tibetan, uh, among the Indian public, among the strategic communities and the political leaders so that uh, the Tibetan issues will be uh, the talking points for the, the Indian community. Representative Dr. Tsawang Gibo Arya of the Liaison Office of His Holiness the Dalai Lama for Japan and East Asia visited South Korea for a 10-day official visit from November 1st to 10th this month. 
The purpose of the visit was to thank the South Korean public and the Sangha members for their continued support for the Tibet cause after prolonged travel restrictions due to the COVID-19 and to further strengthen the friendship born and to empower the Tibetan community in the region. Representative Dr. Arya, during the South Korea tour, visited several places where Tibetan monks have established teaching centers. He met with the abbots, staff and devotees and updated them on the Tibet issue. The Tibet Museum participated in the Federation of International Human Rights Museums Asia-Pacific Annual Conference 2023 in Taipei, Taiwan. The Tibet Museum Director Tenzi Topten deliberated on spreading awareness of Tibet and its significance and the grievous human rights situation inside Tibet, particularly highlighting the wave of self-immolations and finally touching upon the Tibet Museum in advocating human rights violations in Tibet. The conference featured experts and academics from Australia, Japan, Tibet, Thailand and Indonesia, etc sharing their experiences and perspectives on how museums and human rights organizations can promote awareness of human rights issues in a variety of ways and means. Sandesh Meshram, also known as Samde Nishi, a longtime friend of Tibet, currently serving as one of the regional conveners of the core group for Tibetan cause India and also a member of India-Tibet Friendship Society, Nagpur, initiated his fifth Jan Jagran cycled Yatra with a message of Free Tibet, Save India, including the campaign for the release of Tibetan environmentalist and philanthropist Karma Samdup on 5th November from Kolkata, West Bengal. The main purpose of the cycle Yatra is to create awareness among the general Indian masses about Tibet and the critical situation prevailing inside Tibet under the oppressive policies of the Chinese Communist regime. The fifth Jan Jagran cycle yatra starting from Kolkata, West Bengal, covering a distance of 2,500 kilometers, approximately passing through the cities and towns of West Bengal, Charkhand, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Haryana and Delhi, will conclude on 10th December 2023 at the national capital, New Delhi. That is all the news for this week's edition of Tibet This Week. Thank you for watching Tibet TV.